Hey everybody, welcome back. Um, Use cases? Yeah, I mean, so we've been working on pair runtime, especially David, for for um, like half a year now, very intensely to get it out to everybody here. And I think you know, cannot really talk about a runtime without talking about the things it runs. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we thought we just do a little personal take on the things you know apps we're excited about. Possibilities. Um, this is not an exhaustive list. It's kind of like it's just things that we we think about a lot. Uh, so give you an idea about uh, things you could build mm -hmm. or somebody could build. Um, the cool thing about the runtime is it's like it's it's super modular, uh, super powerful. Uh, it uh, runs apps on desktops and, and mobiles, terminal. So, uh, terminal apps even um, if you're a developer. So uh, there's just like a lot of stuff you can do very easily. It also does stuff. Like uh, you talk about this and the building with pair series, but you know we can do uh, instant over the air updates uh, of huge apps, uh, all peer to peer. Um, yeah, every uh, every app is just live. So once yeah. you've once you've uh, put an app out there, any update you make, all of your users have the latest version of the app as soon as you push that. Out. Just to talk a little bit about like the modularity here also, and like how powerful this thing is. One thing you know that's really cool is actually that pair is built with pair. Pair runtime yep. is built with pair runtime. Yep. Which is like a little boop, yeah. Um, <laughs> but just because it's that flexible. Yeah. And that's how we distribute it internally, and that's how we 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 make different builds. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, it's just it's just a really cool thing. Um, but uh, so yeah. that's one use case. That's it's, one it's use case. One use case for pair runtime is building pair runtime. Uh, so uh, if you want to help us build that, it's open source. You can go to our GitHub or you can come work at Whole Punch, obviously. Also, and it's but we've also been having sort of like the whole time we've been doing this, we've been having sort of like higher level conversations that we sometimes yeah. have to stop ourselves from having because it can <laughs> take away the focus. There are so many things you can build. Yeah, it's so exciting. It's also simple, and we're always like, oh no, yeah, we need to build yeah. the runtime. Yeah, before we go and run off and create, <laughs> create our own, you know, insurance app or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but um, yeah, so we'll just share a couple of our ideas. But like one thing I think, and we actually uh, built this internally because it's just so much fun. But uh, you can build things like a little radio app. Uh, mm -hmm. So we had this use case internally. I think a lot of people who work remotely, we're, we're all remote, uh, have where sometimes when you're remote, it's nice to have things that kind of like tie you together. Mm. Uh, so, you know, having an office DJ mm. to place some jams uh, mm. that we can all hear, yeah. it's kind of fun because it's a little social. Yeah, we learned so, We learned he was a hip hop guy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so one of our uh, guys on our team, Rafa, actually made a little app uh, called Pair Radio, uh, which is just excited, a peer-to-peer -peer app uh, where you have a DJ of the day and they play music and the other people who is tuning in on the app can listen to their music. Mm -hmm. And it creates this little sense of social. I love this app because it's it's very peer to peer, mm -hmm. very simple, very simple, easy to build. Uh, he put the the first draft together in a day. Wow! Um, Didn't and know that. and then did a little tuning, obviously afterwards. But like super simple, just just a single guy distributed on the runtime, so no no distribution stuff. And it gave that sense of peer to peer thing immediately because mm -hmm. the peers are tuning in. Mm -hmm. It's a little, you know, just for us thing. Other people can run it also to do the same thing in their office, but it's not like a big internet thing. It's just like a little social experience. Yeah. And there was like the setup cost for that was just the creation of that app. Yeah. That was it. There was that's no it. infrastructure or anything like no that. No infrastructure. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's like a really, really fun little use case to just show you uh, how um, how flexible the stuff is. This is also available on, on GitHub if you want to just see how mm. so, uh, that's put together to get some inspiration. But I think that was that was really mm. powerful. But the use cases can get uh, increasingly sophisticated, oh, of course. Yeah. Like we can get into like gaming territory. And yeah, I like, think that's actually one of the things you say that is, is one of the best things about it because you can yeah. make the simplest app and you yes. can make the most complex app. Yes. And anything in between is mm -hmm. possible. Right? Mm -hmm. It's like. Which means you can start in one place and you can just keep iterating until yeah. you get to where you want to be, or you can. Actually, so you know, many ways. You said gaming. I think gaming is, mm. is super interesting, also. Oh yeah. Because gaming is very social. Mm -hmm. um, um, it's the kind of thing where uh, you want to play with your friends, mm -hmm. peer to peer. Very good at that. Mm -hmm. Especially with peer to peer means you can play privately. Good for real time connections, of course. Good for real time because you're close to each other. Good for latency. Mm -hmm. Uh, it also means that you can play privately. You don't have to send all your data to, to some some farm somewhere that's yeah. analyzing all of it. Yeah, it's nice to be able to play a game without being analyzed. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, you know, games basically mm -hmm. a game with no games. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and um, and I, I think yeah, that's I think that's one of those things. There's where the technology really 
leans into it. Mm. Um, and I've, I'm very excited to see a lot of games happening on it. Yeah. Personally. Something I've been thinking about since the beginning, well, we're close to the beginning, just because of, you know, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of clickbait on the internet these sure. days, and it's, it's gotten worse and worse and worse over time. And it's sort of like moving in a direction that's not really good, like, for anyone. Yeah. Um, could, could, we, could we create, could we use peer-to-peer -to, -peer to create an ecosystem of, like, like integrous, credible journalism? Sure. I think so. Actual journalism. I actual, think. actual, yeah. real, like investigative. Journalism. I think it's. I think it's. I think actually that's super interesting. I think journalism in the centralized world is one, like you said, is one of those things that's been corrupted the most. Mm -hmm. Where it's all about not journalism anymore. No, it's about grabbing eyes, dri driving traffic. Yeah. Uh, getting back to the roots of that, uh, I think it's super interesting. Peer to peer is great for that. Yeah, there's yeah. still some really like decent noble journalists out there, but yeah. like we want to give them a platform that they can <clears throat> like be like we can prove that what they're what they're saying is like factual. Having an app where people can just uh, write their stuff, distribute it, you can verify where it came from, you can build credibility, mm -hmm. uh, you can utilize people. That's what, what a lot of people are doing on, on on Twitter also, but like having that be a small dedicated thing where they can actually also own their data mm -hmm. and build their brand. I think that's super powerful. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, that's yes, yeah, so that's a great, great use case. Also, the peer-to-peer the peer -to -peer nature of things means, you know, I trust this person, they trust this person. You've got this, what they call a web of trust, right? Yeah. In, the, in the centralized, it's faceless. Mm -hmm. And so we can reestablish that web of trust. And you can take all the middlemen out of it and you can just have it focused around the, for journalism, the facts, the, the facts yeah. uh, and the stories. And I think that, that that's a great so, idea. So you could have one person who writes articles. You could have another type of person who like, like creates research data and then the articles could use those research data. You could have maybe like Peer to peer smart contracts between them yeah. because look, basically what we have is can already can already do and that. Already, we're already seeing a little bit of this in Keat where people, uh, you know, I had a uh, I was in a room yesterday where a guy was live tweeting, live Keating, sorry, <laughs> something from um, from um, some meeting of, of Congress, and that was just how I was following it. And it's much better. It's always a much better experience for these things to be social mm -hmm. because then you know you get their take on it but you know who it is it's a, it's a person they're not trying to sell you and that this is like you know the truth they're just saying this is, this is what i what i've experienced it's my own experience yeah i think that's i think that's that's really powerful so so um definitely yeah um tons of other stuff also. yeah tons of other stuff i mean i'm i'm a big uh, i'm a big user of the old uh takeout service on <laughs> you know uh sure. you know i don't cook that much uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll order something and it, it would be cool to be able to, to do that peer to peer as well, because yeah. I, I think it could lead to, you know, maybe more money for, uh, the people that do the delivery, not just the money for the, and the, the tips service. actually go to them, yeah, you know, not just the services yeah. uh, that nobody knows that takes all the money somehow. Yeah. I a hundred percent agree. I think it's also where peer to peer, it's such a good fit because it's local. Right, mm -hmm. it's kind of like you want you you don't want to buy food in you know faraway city. You want to have it local. You yeah. want to support your local. You want it fresh. You want it hot. Yeah, you want to support your local change. You want to know what your neighbors are eating if they want to tell you. Mm -hmm. And in some peer to peer thing, you want to be able to discover all those new places through that. Mm -hmm. There's no reason why that kind of technology have to be bound by all these weird centralized services that take a huge cut of all the mm -hmm. money that the restaurant should be making. Yes. Um, and putting that into growing their businesses. I think yeah. that's actually where peer to peer is just the best. Like, you know, why are we giving away all this money, all these fees to these, yeah. these exchanges that don't really provide anything? Yeah. Kind of thing? I guess the business model of those is that they, they monetize the data in some way. And I think yeah. the question we get asked a lot is like, yes, but how do you monetize these things? Yeah, but I think it's like the most important thing for me here is that, you know, that restaurants can move together and just join on a peer-to-peer -peer app that somebody develops and obviously get paid for development, mm -hmm. but then they can own the app because it's just peer-to-peer -peer and mm -hmm. as it should be, why do they have to source that out to somebody else? Mm -hmm. And then they can just focus on the thing that they're really good at, which is uh, making takeout for you. Mm -hmm. um, so the model could be, so the developer creates a sort of peer-to-peer -peer food app and then signs restaurants up and then yeah. they, they have maybe a back-end peer-to-peer app that they pay for or something like yeah, that. Yeah, they, 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 they add a little bright mirror maybe to make it run smoother and stuff like that. There's a, tell us a lot of stuff, but there's no reason why that has to be a multinational conglomerate that mm -hmm. takes all their data mm -hmm. and uh, takes a percentage fee of, of their of their yeah. uh, food income. I think that's kind of like yeah. a little bit outrageous. So yeah. I think the peer-to-peer -peer ecosystem itself also creates new opportunities. Like mm -hmm. you brought up services there, uh, blind mirroring for instance, yeah. but like, w it would be good to have services that could provide uh, storage mechanisms uh, that, that you maybe pay for, like there's tons, tons, additional services. There's tons of infrastructure thing here that's, that's very interesting in P2P. I think if you're making apps, I think there's 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 more interesting things for, for app developers to make. Because yep. again, it's all about, I think, getting close to the user is yep. where, where it shines really well. Mm -hmm. 
um, and uh, using the, especially using the stuff that P2P is really good at, which is moving lots of data. Uh, so things where you, you know, uh, lots of, you know, streaming adds to your thing could be very useful. I, I'm always looking, you know, things like Twitch and stuff like that. I think mm. that's, that's, that's very interesting peer-to-peer -peer apps. Yeah, like absolutely. It could be very, very interesting peer-to-peer -peer apps because yeah. they just have the, the, the user in focus uh, instead of having it be a platform. To yeah. Get very high bandwidth cost. You could just stream that from your device. And absolutely. And also, you could say, say like media streaming as well. Like mm -hmm. uh, we could release documentaries through Keat, for, for instance, yeah, or something exactly. like that. Kind of like where you take away the, the need to make uh, money because you have to pay for that infrastructure out of the equation and just focus on the app. I think that's that's yes. And then so you're basically you're creating whether it's an app or it's a documentary, a, a media that you deliver through peer-to-peer -peer mechanism, whatever it is. Yeah. It's all about an individual or a, an individual company or person or whatever yeah. creating that value in and of itself, yeah. and then monetizing that value. Yeah. And I think that's a, if you want to get more ideas of, of, of really fun apps to build, I think that's a good idea to keep in mind. Kind of like thinking about instead of trying to make systems that contain all the world's information, mm. take, make systems that really shine on local information. Mm. So um, we tr used to travel a lot and mm. uh, to do computer things. And um, when you would do that, you would look for good cafes. Yes, 100%. And um, that's actually really hard now when I travel because you just find the cafes that, you know, everybody's waiting rather than getting the local cafes yes um so yeah i don't want to know where all the tours are going i want to know mm. where the local people are going mm. because that's where the good stuff is it's funny you bring up rating systems as well there because those are very uh it, currently manipulatable exactly because it's all too it's too global it's too yes, centralized exactly and that's where you know apps to discover local things uh have local people rated get like use the local rating provider rather than the, the global one I think that's super interesting. I think that's very powerful. Mm. And I think that's that's where peer-to-peer -peer really shines. And uh, it's definitely stuff you can very easily make on the parent time, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, just use our primitives, make a little cool UI, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, get going. Since we're talking a little bit about money, what about finance, banking, e-commerce, things like that? Yeah, I mean, uh, cryptocurrency already sh shows that this is like, this. it's a, it's a, a huge it's, market. It has a utility. <clears throat> has tons of utility. Uh, using cryptocurrency with peer-to-peer -peer is, I think, is, is extremely powerful to to do services like. That's how you can take out the need to to find a central broker, but just go between people and and mm -hmm. and do your stuff and um, um, marketplaces. I think for for peer-to-peer -peer marketplace in the future, mm -hmm. I think it's going to be massive. Mm -hmm. uh, we're working on on uh, um, tons of technology for this. Also, um, we have our. A pair credit system that, that we're gonna be rolling out uh, in um, in this year that's gonna try to help with this uh, and other things and I I think in general again just systems where you take out that middleman mm -hmm. why does why does some person you never met have to be involved in you buying something from a store like that's how they don't if you go to a flea market right it's mm. just between you and the person at the flea market yeah there's no reason why if you involve an app in that yeah that that has to change no. I think that's what peer to peer allows you to do yeah um, so so it's kind of like you can make these apps, like you're saying, um, that just work like real life works. Yeah. Which I think is. Yeah, we're restoring, we're actually, rest in a way, the peer to peer thing restores the sort of natural uh, interactions that humans have been used to for <laughs> thousands of years. Yeah, exactly. Tens of thousands of years. Yeah. Uh, so being able to, to, to use technology to uh, connect with each other in the way that we have evolved to connect with each other yeah. rather than through this new sort of panopticon <laughs> geo thing. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, I think that's, that's so true. And I think also that's, that's, I think you can take that idea also and kind of like expand on because I think even if you're not thinking, now we're talking a lot about like very consumer apps, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but I think even things like healthcare, mm. uh, it's actually super interesting for peer-to-peer -peer because in healthcare, you have a lot of, sensitive data obviously you know like health data yeah yeah <clears throat> things that you you tell your doctor things maybe yeah. you, you tell your doctor things that you don't tell anybody else mm -hmm. um which of course makes that data very valuable in makes itself. it very, very valuable in this, and and uh, i don't think your healthcare provider should be a tech company no because that tends not to go well you should just focus around keeping you alive and keeping you healthy core business um and I think peer-to-peer -peer is really good in situations like that because you can make apps in healthcare that keeps the data private because mm. it's peer-to-peer, -peer, mm. local, mm -hmm. between you and the doctor. Mm -hmm. um, 
keeps a record, so you can you can you know you can take your data with you to a new doctor mm -hmm. if you wanted to. Obviously, there's a lot of compliance in here, and you would have to think about that. Sure, but also the auditability. Auditability. We have that, and it never leaves. Data would never leave your device and your health yes. provider's device to go to a server in America. Yes. Where at some point it gets leaked. Yes. And now your healthcare data is all over the world. Yeah, so. I, I like the, the the auditability thing because you can you can it, it, again it restores how we've been operating for thousands of tens of thousands of years before this is that you can and it, it, in a more sophisticated way but you can essentially use the auditable log of uh, all of your data to prove your innocence. Yeah. But you're not vulnerable to being mass surveilled yeah. for guilt. Yeah. And so you're not at threat of some some you know political shift that sure. now puts you in a yeah. in a place where you're somehow it's basically just targeted. It's, it's just privacy actually. It's just privacy. It's without the privacy without a trade off where you don't get the functionality that you that you that you need to get. And uh -huh. I think actually an extension of that is very good because like I'm sure you can develop Really powerful AI systems that could do a lot of analysis on your on your health data. Mm -hmm. If that runs in a big data center with all your other data, that's going to get leaked. Yeah. Like that's going to be used in a way where, like you know, for profiling and, and it will be laundered as well yeah. because AI can be. Oh, that's this is AI. It's not <coughs> that content. It's AI content. Running a small AI with your private just on your device, mm -hmm. health data data to figure out that, oh, actually it turns out that these signal signs we're looking at, yeah. you might have diabetes or something. Yeah. That's super powerful for me so as, powerful. As, a, as, a, as a user, right? Uh, Not just for health, for anything in your life. Anything else. So you can like, trust that AI because it's your AI. Yeah, exactly. So just moving the data around makes these like critical services, I think, much more powerful. And actually, I think it enables technology in a, in a huge way. Huge. Uh, Without uh, with very few trade offs, mm. uh, so I think that's I think that's super interesting. Exciting! There's so many opportunities. Yeah, so many things to build. This is the but this has been our problem the whole time. And yeah. as we say, like we we don't we can't build all of this. That's why we gotta do this video to get an outlet. Get, yeah, get it all. please build these things. Yeah, please, please. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, we can go on and on. But I think like the the the, the general idea here is that you can you can you can build. Yeah. basically anything if you you want to share content if you want to connect people if you want to uh, have uh, work with data all of these things are possible without centralized services and they work better in our opinion and if I was building, if, opinion, I was building an, if I had time to build apps now I've spent all my time building runtimes and, and cool stuff mm -hmm. uh, uh, I would think about apps where privacy is is key. Yeah. Like things like I think even dating apps super interesting and PGP oh yeah because you can do much more uh, like local stuff um, things like chat, we're already building Keith, so you know we already had that one covered. Um, social media, I think, super powerful. I think mm -hmm. Keith again. Yeah, anything that's just involving privacy and high trust is just um, like cookie cutter, easy yep. to go to. Yep. Like that's that's the, the crazy stuff. In terms of gathering audiences for for, I know we I know we've covered a lot, but yeah. just to wrap it up, I suppose. In terms of covering audiences uh, that have, uh, that, that, that you, you've got an app and you put it out and you, you wanna get some people using it, mm -hmm. uh, that, that, can, that can start at the local level. But we've, we just mentioned Keith there a few times. If, if you already have a peer-to-peer -peer app that has an audience, mm -hmm. then it could be, there's a lot of potential there again for apps to work together sure. and, and, and host each other as peer-to-peer as -peer apps and, or signpost to each other. Well, peer-to-peer -peer is, in, in by its nature, very viral, right? It's yes. like data that's, that can spread anywhere and it's very mm -hmm. viable. The same with apps also. You could, there's no reason why you couldn't share apps this way and kind of bootstrap these private communities mm -hmm. uh, in the same way. I think that's very powerful. Like mm -hmm. any app built on on pair runtime, like we talked about in the beginning, it's just it's a peer-to-peer -peer data structure also. Yes. So there's no reason why you couldn't get all those apps without, um, um, but, uh, in a centralized place, you can just get them through your 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 peer-to-peer -peer networks. So I think that's I think that's key to that also for bootstrapping new things and and getting a lot of different apps that, that solve small problems mm. in a good way. So, so conclusion is yeah, there's a lot of stuff. Build, build, build a ton of stuff and. Uh, Share it all with us. Uh, we have some stuff on, on pairs.com already uh, where we showcase uh, apps that we find and we like. Uh, so, um, yeah. Uh, Let us know if you're working on something. And if you're just getting started, check out the Building with Pair series where we kind of walk through um, how to build a lot of apps. And, and of course, the, the documentation. The documentation. And, uh, and yeah, uh, keep building. Yeah. Keep building. Awesome. With Pair. With Pair. <laughs>